Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to this uh, special council meeting. I'm calling the meeting to order now. And I would uh, inform you in the gallery that for your convenience, for your possible convenience, we are live streaming the proceedings in here to the atrium where there are additional chairs. Should uh, those of you in back not wish to take any of this, well, actually, the spaces in the pews have pretty much been used up. So anyway, if you need a seat, we have them for you. Uh, Madam Clerk, uh, would you um, cite the regrets this evening? Uh, yes, we have regrets from Councillors Chisholm, Robinson, and Councillor Algar. Thank you. And uh, Councillor, are there any declarations of pecuniary interest? Madam Clerk, I see none. And um, we have delegations. Madam Clerk, would you like to call the first delegation? First delegation is David Shemilt, Shemilt um, regarding item three on tonight's agenda. Welcome, sir. Council looks forward to your information. Wait for technology. <coughs> Maybe you'd like to tell us what you're trying to make happen. <laughs> uh, just for the PowerPoint to present overhead. There we go. Okay, thank you. Mr. Mayor, councillors, thank you for the opportunity to present tonight. My name is David Shemilt. My presentation tonight is about the, the new natatorium that will be going into the South Central Community Centre. <coughs> We've been working with staff quite hard and with your consultant on this project, and I'd like to thank them, they've been great. I'd like to thank them for incorporating our data and using our representatives in their community development surveys. I have also appreciated, and I think they've appreciated that they've been dealing with one point person on this. However, I'd like to just take a moment here to welcome a few other people tonight that are also here, because up until now you've just been hearing from me. So I'd like to thank a few people for some of the other stakeholders that are here. So we have representatives tonight from Special Olympics. We've got the Oakville Aquatic Club. We've got people from Water Polo, both competitive and recreational. They tell me the recreational committee, the recreational water polo is also AKA the Beer League. Residents of Southeast Oakville. We've got the Competitive Life Saving Club. We have Master Swimming, Lake Ontario Swim Team, whom I'm, I know you know from, Sport Oakville, some synchronized swimming, both competitive and recreational. We've got triathletes, we've got yoga fit, we've got stand-up paddleboard yoga, we've got representative from Burlo Canoe Club, scuba diving, and various high schools, including SMLS, OT, St. Thomas, and hopefully soon to be created a club at Lindbrook. The presentation tonight I know is not new. The town has investigated building a 50-meter pool several times in the past, and I understand there's probably a little bit of pool fatigue. However, Good ideas have this habit of not going away. They keep coming back. Recent technology advances have solved some of the areas of concern and the demand continues to increase. We all want the same result here. We do have a synergistic relationship. We tr you provide the basic programming. We provide the next level. We provide the professional coaches. We take them to beyond the basic training. We train the athletes who are then your next generation of lifeguards, who are ne your next instructors, and your next coaches. We teach life skills, and while society continues to struggle with getting its citizens more active, we provide the professional coaching in a safe environment to meet these goals. We've been working with staff to provide the market research data to identify user demand. Our preliminary report by the ISG group has been attached as an appendix to the JF group report, which is in your package. Our market research has indicated two big issues that are of concern. The current Centennial Pool, which is the location of some of your town's specialty programming, current has limited time available to local residents. It is otherwise booked with recreational programs and community user groups. Adding a pool of the exact same dimensions, and I just lost my spot. Adding a pool of the exact same dimensions in a new community center will actually frustrate your residents, 
who are hoping to have increased access to a pool. If history is a guide, we will continue to seek more space, but you have an additional problem. The residents that opposed us now will be here four years from now to complain that they don't have access to the new pool. For example, there is one lane available for length swimming for one hour between 2 p.m. and 8 p.m. between Monday and Friday. I don't imagine we want to kick anybody out. A Sport England report suggests that it should be recognized that new replacement or refurbished pools which meet the present day standards have the effect of increasing demand. Your staff report states that a pool attached to any other synergistic amenities and facilities will also increase demand. We have interviewed local aquatic stakeholders including but not limited to your master swimming, Special Olympics, high school swim teams and found significant waiting lists and demand for additional rental space to meet current unmet demand in Oakville. We've also identified new user groups including synchronized swimming and water polo. Anxious to commit to pool time to offer aquatic sports that are currently not available or not offered or unable to rent any space in Oakville. The JF report estimates that with the demand we have identified, 90% of rentable hours of a new 50 meter pool would be utilized. 90%. Where do we go? User group needs and use. Our research, the aquatic groups currently using the Centennial Pool and other pools have expressed strong interest in spending time and space. We need to ask for you to, for us to continue to work with the Recreation and Culture Department to, and Management, continue to work with the current user groups to further identify and quantify the added time and space requested and determine annual incremental town revenue increases. During this process will also be time for us to obtain letters of intent. Currently everything has gone through me and now it's time to put things into writing. Community use and impact. A 50 meter pool can have a significant positive impact on community access and enhanced aquatic programming for all pools in Oakville. Based on the user group comment or commitments, we ask that the key user groups work with the Recreation and Culture Department to develop an updated schedule for all the pools and we recommend shifting some of the current user groups from some of your warm water program pools to a new 50 meter pool, which would open up time and some of the other pools, which would be benefit for everybody. Because currently you just have no access in some of these other pools. We could take some of that demand out of those pools, put it into the new facility, and it would benefit you whether you're at QE Park, whether you're at Iroquois, Glen Abbey, and open up some of that time for other people to use. Design and costing. The initial design options for a full 50 meter pool presented to the town in the initial aquatics center st study provided quite a few design features and amenities that are just not critical and necessary to the key user groups. A more basic 50 meter pool design could more cost effectively meet both the needs of user groups and provide better support for community <coughs> aquatic programming. Again, we suggest we need to work with the recreation department put together a proper schedule. The question that I'm always asked, what's my delta? The delta being what's the differential cost between building the basic pace which is a six lane 25 meter pool and going to a 50 meter pool whether it be eight lanes or ten lanes. The report suggests an additional 24,000 square feet to accommodate 50 meters with an additional cost of 16 to 21 million dollars. By eliminating features and amenities we can significantly reduce that cost and size. We've also reviewed the revenue projections and we can significantly increase the revenue projections. I'd like to note, I only just received that JF report today, so we're just digesting the data in there now. They did use a lot of my own, our data. I didn't get all of their assumptions yet. Now that I've seen their assumptions, we need to go back and communicate with them. So John Frittenberg was very good. I had hired somebody, town hired John, they did communicate, they did share data, but they didn't have a chance to come back and communicate again. I attended the marriage breakfast last week. I'd like to say, Council, you have done a fabulous job of growing Oakville, attracting new residents, businesses, and creating jobs. You didn't need to tell us that. I didn't need to be there to know. But I can tell you that we are constantly fielding phone calls and emails from new residents coming into the community, and they're searching out opportunities for aquatic sports programming in Oakville. We can accommodate some, but many we've had to turn away. We just, we can't accommodate. We are, we are full. I've heard many of the concerns from local residents and we understand and want to work with them. And we have reached out to them. 
We understand traffic, parking, appearance are all issues that can be, and these can all be solved. There was considerable interest in one of the recent town meetings to dress up the parking garage and to do something special with the area. A design competition was even suggested. I said, let's do it, go for it. We want to work with staff and local residents to specify the amenities needed to, make, to meet the demands of this community. We're going to need a little more time. I need probably another eight to ten weeks to digest the JF report, work with staff, work with the user group so we can quantify this better, work out the revenue case better, build the business case. We also have to go and do a feasibility study on fundraising. We have a range for a fundraiser. You would be familiar with them. They helped you with the hospital. We need to hire them now so they can do a feasibility study to see if we can, how much money we can raise to, to cover that capital cost differential. A couple of slides here. This one's important. Well, I have to be brief. This is a 50 meter pool inside of a basketball court. This is movable floor with the hydro bikes. You've got those in the Kiwi Park. This is the pool inside a hockey arena. Different actions you can do. To put this facility into proper perspective, most people are familiar with what the hockey rink is. Hockey rinks are 200 feet long, NHL rinks are 85 feet long, 85 feet wide. A 50 meter tank is 165 feet. It fits inside of your hockey rink. And it's only 82 feet wide, it fits inside the boards. Put the two together. Any one of your hockey arenas out there would accommodate what we are asking for at this point in time. And I'm out of time. Perfect. Any questions, please? Thank you for your information. Councillor Lischina. Good evening, Mr. Shaw. Thank you very much for your presentation. Um, a couple of questions for you. You mentioned that the um, swim clubs use a lot of the rental time in Oakville, that you have run out of time. So do you go outside of Oakville to rent pool space and, and swimming practice time? Yes. Currently, only about 40% of our budget is spent in town pools. The other 60% is spent outside of town facilities and outside of Oakville. We currently rent space in Mississauga, Burlington, and Hamilton, and occasionally St. Catharines. Do you, do you ever go to the, um, in Etobicoke, the 50-meter pool, pool in Etobicoke? The Olympium? No, we use the 50-meter pool at McMaster and in St. Catharines at Brock University. The okay. Olympium is full. Thank you. Um, the other uh, question I had with respect to, um, uh, given your experience in, with pools, uh, the therapeutic pool, um, could, could you make a comment on that? That's one of the things that's recommended in this report. I saw that in the staff report, uh, and I'd like to add that we, staff did some additional research. They sent a group to Toronto, uh, University of Toronto pool in Scarborough, where they saw two facilities, and then some of them went down to Windsor, and I accompanied them down there as well. And it gave you a great sampling of what a 50 meter training pool was, a hybrid, and then what a, an event facility. But the important one that we saw in Windsor was what we prefer to actually call an activity pool. An activity pool is a basic pool, and I believe the report calls for about a 4,500 square foot allocation to that, which would give you a pool that's about eight or nine meters wide and about 20 meters long, which I think would be Fabulous. Uh, I highly recommend that you do that. And as a rectangular setup, you can do all your programming in there with warm water. You have it set at 88 degrees. You can run classes in there. If it's set up properly, it's a rectangle. Like everybody can see the instructor. You want to run uh, parent and taught. You want to run uh, the hydro bike. You want to run a yoga class in there. You want to run anything. Highly recommend that you add that. I was very pleased to see that in there as a staff recommendation. Councillor O'Meara. Thank you very much for, um, um, for your presentation and for everyone for coming out. It's obviously, um, it's a very, uh, very compelling story and, and, and a very compelling request and I appreciate the passion. Um, one question I had uh, is with regards to the staff report for 16 to $21 million extra in capital costs, which doesn't include any extra operational costs. You had mentioned that you could get that down by taking away amenities and, and another word you used, I, I forget what that was, but 
Um, what do you think you could get that number down to, or, or what would you realistically be looking at as a number for a 50 meter pool as opposed to a 25? The, the cost for the tank is fixed. I already know it's a million and a half dollars to buy the tank. It's when you start adding the other amenities, whether it be one or two bulkheads, whether it be a thermal bulkhead, whether it be a movable floor, how much deck space. We just saw in the JF report now what your cost per square foot to build is. The other issue is depth. Every time you go down another foot, of course, you add quite a bit of depth. And they've made some assumptions there where they've added the bulkhead, they've added a, a movable floor, and they've gone to a constant depth of about seven or eight feet. We're saying, we don't need that. You can program probably more effectively in a 10 lane pool because you can run 25 meters across, you don't need a bulkhead. If we have a shallow section in the end or in the middle, you don't need a movable bulkhead, or sorry, movable floor. And then if you have that activity pool, that I think is the best thing for really gives you a broad range of programming. Because currently in Oakville, you do a magnificent job of programming warm water shallow pools. But we have no access to deep water or pools that are run at maybe 82 degrees rather than 84. So this would be your opportunity to complement and give you a full range. Okay, but I, sorry, I guess I'm, I'm just trying to talk numbers right now. I understand the need for it. I, as a, as a um, former amateur athlete as well, I, I, I know there's a lot of um, things we, we could be doing in our community, but I'm, I'm trying to get to a number here because the 16 to $20 million number is quite substantial. Um, and I know you might not have had time to go through the report, but ballpark, I mean, are you down to a couple million or five million or do you? I was in the five to 10, I was in the five to $10 million range. Okay. I take out a floor, which is a million dollars, right away. And I would go to, I could have maybe 15 feet of deck space rather than 20. We don't need stands, we don't need high ceilings, we don't need depth, and those are what really ramp up your costs. And when you go to a wider span, suddenly instead of it being $600 a square foot, you go to $900 a square foot because you're talking bigger spans. Let's bring it down. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Adam. Thank you very much. Appreciate the presentation and I appreciate the various discussions we've had over the last few months on the topic. Um, now the intention is for this to go to the June 26th council meeting. Uh, is that too early for you? It might be cutting me a little close. I, uh, I'm told that I need eight to ten weeks and if that's if everything goes well. Okay and uh, if it was June 26th what could you accomplish by then? I would have a preliminary feasibility report on the financing of, of, of the fundraising and we would be able to lock down the users because right now everything with staff has been on my say so now I need to get letters of intent signed by all the various user groups so you can start firming up your numbers. We also need to go through, there were certain assumptions made in that JF report, uh, they've used $14.65 for a 25 meter lane for one hour and that is your base case your lowest cost. Really, you've got a range of costs to go from there to 30, so we need to adjust those numbers. We found about another $250,000 worth of revenue just by fixing that, but I need more time to go through it. Okay, and you made some assumptions around the, or you, you noted that you could fill the pool to a 90% capacity level. How much of that is through cannibalization of other pool use? Uh, we thought we probably would remove potentially 50% was our initial thought, and that would allow you to bring in some of your other programming. So we would actually take some of the programming out of Centennial to fill in that, and we've actually created schedules now where we can, I can show you what we think you would utilize in the pool Monday to Friday from 5.30 in the morning to 10 o'clock at night. We've already we've done that. So we would be trading. You'd want to take warm water, or you'd want to take activities out of the warm water and put them into a bigger pool and take activities that are more appropriate in warm water, shallow water, and put them back into there. And then we just we felt that there was looking at what other communities are doing in terms of access for people that want to do length swimmings. We saw my, earlier I mentioned if you want to swim a length in Oakville anywhere, you cannot between 2 in the afternoon and 8 o'clock at night. There is no place for you to go swim a length. So we think proper community programming is you need to be able to go to Glen Abbey at three o'clock in the afternoon and at least have a couple of lanes open for length swimming for anybody. And that's what we'd like to open up. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much for your information. Are you aware that um, 
uh, council can amend its plans at any time? No. Now that you're aware of that, yes. would, would you find it a congenial suggestion if I was to say to you that you can take your time, eight, 10, however many weeks you want, and when you're ready, you can come on back and talk to us and, and we'll see whether you've come up with a winning proposal or not. That would be great, that would be ideal. I don't see any reason that this should delay, because I know there's a lot of interest in the community to get going on this. I see no reason why it shouldn't get going on the design phase of this. The actual size of the natatorium could be easily adjusted at any point in time. And I don't believe it'll affect your timing of opening day. Thank you very much for coming and thank you for the information. Um, just out of curiosity, are the blue shirts yours? Yes. <laughs> Do the blue shirts want uh, a minute to leave or are you going to stay for the rest of the evening's entertainment? I think a lot of kids have uh, early morning workout tomorrow morning and some uh, have school work to do and I think they would appreciate a 30 seconds to escape. We'll have a 30 second pause while a graceful exit is executed. Thank you Mr. Mayor. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're going to call the special council meeting back into order. And uh, Madam Clerk, would you call the next delegation? The next delegation is Peter DeRosa, who's president of the Trafalgar Chartwell Residents Association and speaking to all of the items listed on this evening's agenda. Mr. DeRosa, welcome. Council looks forward to your information. Thank you, Mayor. I'll take the opportunity to uh, drink a little bit of water here. Mayor Burton, members of the council, and members of the community. My name is Peter DeRosa, president of Trafalgar Chartwell Residents Association. I'm pleased to be here and represent the views of five residents association um, in Ward 3. And that is Trafalgar Chartwell, Joshua Creek, Oakville Lakeside, Chartwell Maple Grove, and Clearview. To begin, we congratulate council and staff on the job well done on this file and uh, appreciate the public consultation that has taken place to date and the opportunity, of course, to, uh, for continuing to do so uh, before decisions are made. Our constituents, like us, are anxious to enjoy the benefits 
of a much needed community recreation center and parklands, and we are looking forward to meeting the new neighbors that will occupy and purchase the new homes. We look forward to the development of these lands with an integrated vision that considers the unique character of its location in relation to Midtown, Downtown, and the Town Heritage Districts. First, let me say that we are delighted that the dates for conceptualization have been moved forward. This way we can proceed on schedule with the development and meet our 2020 timelines for the Community Recreation Center. You will find today that our delegation is consistent with our positions taken back in uh, December 2nd, 2013. We are pleased that our comments then were heard and are reflected in today's reports. We hope that you are equally considerate of our remarks today. With respect to agenda item number one, active parklands, parkland acquisition, and completion of the parks and open space strategy. From the report, we noted that Oakville's existing active parkland supply translates into a provision rate of approximately 2.12 hectares per, hundred resi per thousand residents, sorry. And moving forward, it is recommended that the target be increased to 2.2. The five-year review of the 2012 parks, page 86 states that the Southeast Oakville only provides for 1.89 hectares of active parkland per thousand residents. We ask council to consider the shortfall in the amount of parklands that will be allocated in this area. With respect to agenda item number two, financial overview, former Oakville Trafalgar Memorial Hospital OTMH lands. We accept the estimated costs of the base program for the community center being $30 million, as well $8 million for our optional programming enhancements. However, we would like to point out that these additional amenities are not unique as they are consistent with other community centers in Oakville. In addition, these amenities support the principle of fair geographic distribution of the community services throughout Oakville, which council endorsed in 2012. With respect to item, agenda item number three, Southeast Community Recreation Center. The, rec the recommendations in Southeast Oakville Community Center staff report of 2017 includes fitness center, a therapy pool, an indoor walking track, a 25 meter pool, and enhancements for the parking garage. All will provide the community center with a community center which will be well used as an integral part of our community. The inclusion of a double gym is needed to address the, short of, uh, the shortage of gym space caused by the closing of three schools. All the amenities contemplated in the report are consistent with what we envisioned in 2012 and we look forward to your support. Also, we hope that all future public transportation discussions will consider the provision of easy access to the community center from all areas of Ward 3. We do not support a 50 meter pool in this location, nor any appeal for delayed decisions under the pretext of further study. This is a project that is, that is better suited for an athletic center with capacity to draw users from the whole region rather than just the local community. Therefore, we are united that the project needs to stay on current timelines of completion by the fall of 2020. With respect to uh, agenda items number four, master plan former Oakville Trafalgar Memorial Hospital lands. The coalition appreciates the opportunity to review the three land use options that have been presented. The presentation of options was requested by the community and will be very helpful in, in, as a reference point for further public consultation. We will continue to solicit input from the community 
on these options and will encourage residents to provide their feedback to the town at the information sessions. The redevelopment, the redeveloped hospital lands must conform to the livable Oakville plan policies and we remain committed to seeking a result for the entire site which is integrated and architecturally pleasing. The coalition supports the vision for the hospital lands that includes a new community center, parkland, some mixed single and townhouse residential development consistent with the character of the surrounding neighborhood. The restoration of the old OTHS and the protection of the endangered chimney swifts. OTHS could potentially be used as a senior's residence and our residents would also like to see some sort of medical facility in the area as determined by the Lynn. We support 80 parking spaces for Wyndham Manor to be in the existing 500 space parking garage rather than taking up much needed parkland provided the capacity of the existing parking garage is adequate. In conclusion, we are looking forward to participating in public consultation on the three options. We trust that council staff will continue to be open to suggestions for modifications. We understand that you may have some questions for us, but would appreciate the opportunity to write them down and discuss them as a group before we respond promptly, obviously. Thank you for your time and support. Thank you for your information, Mr. DeRosa. Uh, Councillor Giddings. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Uh, thanks for joining us this evening. Uh, for those on council that aren't aware, Peter is the newly elected chair of the Trafalgar Chartwell Residents Association. And with us tonight, we also have Tim Danter recently uh, elected of CMGRA. George Nibluck is back there, I believe, replacing uh, Boyd Waits at Oakville Lakeside and Bob Bravers uh, with COCA uh, taking over from uh, Michelle and Laura. So just wanted to introduce my council colleagues to you and thank Danny and Morowitz and uh, Dave Mallon for what you've been doing over the past. It's been six years that we've been having these discussions. Uh, the entire group of residents have been working with uh, the families in their area, reaching out to residents, doing surveys, uh, working with their elected representatives and town staff. You've had a, it's been a very long, thoughtful process. So I appreciate your remarks this evening and uh, thank you very much. It's an exciting time. Thank you for the opportunity. Councillor Lischina. Thank you, Your Worship. Good evening, Mr. DeRosa. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, I realize you may not be able to answer uh, the question, as you stated, you'd like to discuss it with, uh, with your colleagues. Um, I know in, in the report, with respect to item three, the community centers, one of the uh, issues that the, the local residents were talking about, if there was a, a bigger pool that the, the activities around that would increase um, the traffic. So I'm assuming m most of you have been in that uh, location for many, many years. With respect to when the hospital was an active hospital, uh, with respect to the traffic in that area, do you, do you anticipate the traffic will be different or different pattern? How is that um, comparable to what you've experienced over the years? Uh, notionally, uh, I believe that if we uh, uh, contemplate uh, um, a 50 meter pool with a, with a community center that, that has the potential of uh, reaching 75, 80,000 square feet, um, I would expect that traffic would, would probably increase to some degree, more, more than what the hospital experience was. So that would be one of the consequences. Uh, the other consequence of, uh, of uh, an 80,000 square, square foot structure uh, on that piece of property uh, would be scaling. Um, the property is not big enough or the, the environment or the, the, surrounding, the surrounding housing um, is not conducive to uh, an 80,000 square foot structure to be in the middle of it.
Thank you very much. Oh, Councillor Hutchins. Thank you very much, Peter. I, I very much appreciate you coming and putting in these very sensible uh, presentation. <clears throat> I have a question about the resident associations uh, wanting to only sell what land is necessary to cover the costs. Is that, that, is that your positions or the resident associations on, on that? You know, we, uh, um, we've done a lot of work to, um, to create a coalition uh, for this evening. And I would like to take that, that question and give my colleagues an opportunity to, to, to respond uh, at an earlier, later date, if you don't mind. Okay, okay. Fair enough, thank you. Mr. DeRosa, oh, Councillor Adams. Thank you very much for the presentation. It's the second time that I think I've heard the uh, desire of the community groups not to have a 50 meter pool at the location. Uh, I think it's the first time that I've, I've heard some of the discussion as to why. Uh, apart from the traffic issues, what are the other issues that the residents associations have with a 50 meter pool? Um, again, I would like to take the question offline okay. and discuss it with my, uh, with my colleagues. Um, but there are a number of other reasons that uh, we can, that would play uh, in favor of not being, not, not supporting uh, a 50 meter pool in that location. Our position is not against the 50 meter pool, our position is the location of the 50 meter pool. So not, not in your neighborhood? Not in the neighborhood. Okay, thank you. Mr. DeRosa, thank you very much for your information. Thank you. Madam Clerk, the uh, next delegation. The next delegation is Janet Haslett Peel, uh, Joshua Creek Residents Association, regarding item three on tonight's agenda. Welcome, Ms. Haslett Thiel. We look forward to your information. Good evening. I'll keep my comments very brief because the coalition did voice tonight all the views of JCRA in terms of the content of the letter. Um, I would like to, to make one comment, and that is that we take, we take this very seriously. It's been a long journey. It's been an exciting journey. You've been on this journey with us. And um, so all your questions will, we, we will answer. We've, we have healthy dialogue amongst all of us. Um, there was a phrase that was just used, and it said, not in my neighborhood. And I just want to be very clear. This is about not, the phrase not in my neighborhood is probably not appropriate. It is about what's the right place for their request. Um, and it might be an athletic complex. But we have a lot of dialogue to do. We learned some things tonight, um, potentially that hadn't been shared before. Um, and we will be back to you. And on behalf of JCRA, we thank the coalition for coming forward um, and making uh, their presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hazlitt. Do you all any questions? All right, Madam Clerk, is there another delegation? That's it for delegations, ladies and gentlemen. So, Council, uh, with regard to discussion item number one, do you have questions? Councillor Duck. I guess the one question I do have, uh, and when you look at all the issues that we're dealing with in the context of the report, it pertains to the um, leash-free parks <laughs> for the dogs. And I noticed that there was some reference to a different type of leash-free park. Can you elaborate on that? Like what we're used to using with the leash-free parks? Sorry. If I may, I'd like to introduce our <laughs> consultant, Steve Langlois. He is from uh, Monteith Brown, and he's here to answer any questions with respect to the uh, technical review of the uh, 2012 master plan. This is strictly a five-year review. And also, uh, uh, Carolyn Marshall is here from Dillon Consulting to speak to any planning issues. 
And if it, uh, if it would please so counsel, I do have a presentation. New tech dog parks, I guess. If you could point the microphone towards your face, it'll work better. Okay. Uh, sorry, I, I'd absolutely respond to that question. And, and if it does please counsel, we do have a, an overview presentation of the master plan, but I'll leave that to your discretion. Uh, while it's on, uh, on the floor, I can respond. Uh, the master plan does speak to leash-free dog areas. It, it really uh, carries forward the recommendation that was embedded in the, the 2012 master plan, which is, is to continue to allow them uh, and, and uh, encourage them in appropriate spaces where there are uh, organized groups uh, that are there to act as stewards for those spaces. So um, I, I not finding the exact uh, reference that, that you're referring to in terms of a different space. What we do know from our experience in, in some more intensified areas, downtown Toronto being an extreme example, but more high-rise uh, areas, those dog parks are getting smaller because of the demands on, on park space. And uh, any exclusive use of park space, which dog off-leash areas are, uh, you know, can, uh, can cause challenges. I guess my concern is we have the uh, census rain complex up at the top of Kerr and Spears, and we've got several other condominiums going in in that area, and it butts a residential area that already had requested to have a leash-free park in it. And so hence, when you referenced in the report the fact that it often is that high density, um, it made sense. And I've noticed, for instance, over in Burlington, on the lakeshore, they have an apartment building, and they have like a, a track, for lack of a better word, that the homeowners or the um, tenants use for their, not to exercise, but at least to let them go out and relieve themselves in a, uh, a designated area. So I look forward to seeing that. Um, that's the one thing that really jumped up to me in regards to that issue. And again, the, uh, the good work in regards to the the geographic comparison in terms of how we're balancing the needs amongst our community. So thank you for that. Thank you, Councillor Dudek. Councillor Giddings. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you, the second recommendation talks about uh, uh, the five-year uh, review of 2012, uh, dated uh, April 2017, be approved, which is great. Uh, and then number three, that staff rep develop and report back on a parks and open space strategy. That ties in with uh, the assessment as required by Bill 73. Do we have a timeline on that? Through your, uh, through um, uh, Mayor Burton, uh, no timeline has been established through this plan that's in front of you today. Uh, we have identified that as a high priority to undertake in the short term, and, and what that means is over the course of you know, a high priority implementation item. That would be uh, referred to your, your planning and development staff in, in uh, conjunction with, uh, with community services uh, and, and likely as part of uh, the official plan review. So it'll be fairly short, short term. Through you, Mr. Chair, we would be initiating work on this almost immediately following uh, the approval of this particular plan. Excellent, thanks. Uh, back in 2012, we had a rich discussion about splash pads. And uh, I notice here that, um, and at that time, the staff report that came back talked about, on a case-by-case -case basis, consider opportunities to add splash pads to existing parks in older neighborhoods uh, that have distribution gaps, southeast and east. Uh, that are going under, undergoing population renewal. That's not covered off on this, although it does mention Southeast Oakville College Park, Merton, et cetera. Would those be at the top of the list in terms of uh, adding to the, I believe, six or seven that are in the works? So with respect to um, Southeast Oakville specifically, uh, the intent is to actually look at the family of parks that will be developed uh, in and around the former hospital lands. So that would include a review of uh, Wallace, uh, the Brantwood uh, Park area, and also what would be created on the former hospital lands to see where there might be a, a location that would work for a splash pad there. All right, and the same consideration is going to be given to College Park, Merton, and the others? Absolutely. 
Great. And last question is regarding uh, the 2012 master plan recommended town support the establishment of additional community gardens and orchards, uh, something near and dear to me. Uh, a policy has not as yet been developed. Is there one going to be developed as was uh, referred, referenced in 2012, or is that going to be case by case uh, working with other community partners? Through you, Mr. Chair, uh, the intent at this point in time is to look at case by case because when we are actually in the process of designing parks, some of them are more amenable to uh, creating community gardens than others. So, and also it, it depends on the uh, interest of the local neighborhood in, in supporting a community garden. And that could, could that include other public lands other than uh, our normal parks uh, area thinking? Backs of fire halls, hydro lines, right of ways. It's something that we could certainly look at. Um, uh, when you actually look at some of the uh, ways that uh, parks are being developed in, with community gardens in other jurisdictions, uh, groups are actually looking at repurposing space for those kinds of um, opportunities. Yeah. And so that would be something that over time we would want to look at as well. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Giddings. Councillor O'Meara. Uh, thank you very much. My, my question actually um, revolves around the youth centers. Um, I, I don't see any data in terms of what we're tracking or how many youths are using the facilities or when they're using the facilities. Um, I know the one in Brawny uh, has varied hours and times that it's open. Um, and, and in the needs and provisions, it, it states that, you know, we need to, in meeting future needs. And, and But I, I'm not sure that we've got any evidence about what what how much it's being used yet so I'm, I'm wondering if we have data or why we can't collect data on who's using it and when and 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 why we wouldn't have that or be collecting that I'll, uh, I'll pass the the data question on to staff I know in terms of the the master plan itself uh, the the core principle behind the recommendation there which is to uh, as a high priority in the short term to develop a youth center in, in east, sort of northeast. Uh, Oakville is, is based on geographic distribution, based on the number of youth living uh, within that quadrant of the community. And um, I, I would have to pass the, uh, the data question on to staff. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, we do collect data uh, from our existing youth centers. Um, however, we are um, getting a lot of anecdotal uh, comments about uh, youth congregating in, in our northern facilities and that we need to take a look at how to more formalize some of our programs for youth, particularly um, 16 Mile as an example. We have over 100 youth that congregate um, to socialize and to hang out with each other on Friday nights and uh, through the weekend. So we're looking at ways that we might be able to do more formalized programming and, and clearly fill a gap that is uh, occurring there. Uh, well, thank you. I'm, I'm not. I'm not um, trying to deny the the need. I'm just, you know, I think it's 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 hard to put our finger on the pulse of what kids want. And when I drive by the Shell Park skateboard park, it's packed with kids. And are they there, or are they going into a place where there's a pool table that we've provided? So I'm wondering how we're tracking what it is that they want. Do they want programming, or do they want free assembly areas? And and I guess I'm. Um, I, I know it's 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 hard to go and count the kids on a Friday night at a skateboard park, but we should be able to to know what the what the you know. You know, I, I guess I just would like to see how many, what the use is, and 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 is it busy, and when it's busy, um, and know, you know, are we open at the right times, or are we not, uh, and those sorts of things. So I'm not sure if we might be able to just report back on that. That would be fantastic. Um, if I may, th through you, Mr. Mayor, um, uh, Council. Yes, we we do we do track the usage at our at our community at our youth centers. Um, and, uh, and and we use that data as well as other data to help determine uh, what uh, our next steps are going to be. And one of our plans for the next uh, uh, in the next year is to do exactly what you are suggesting. We we uh, we we need to have a plan for our future youth centers and um, engaging the youth and determining the the uh, proper location and the timing for the 
the, for the, any new location. And, and it, not necessarily even youth centers, but youth outreach opportunities. So this is work that we are going to be engaging in over the next year. Thank you very much. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you, Councillor O'Meara. Councillor Adams? I do have a couple of questions, but I, I, want, I wonder if our staff could provide the presentation. I think it would be of interest to those who are watching here tonight, as well as those who might be watching from home. Councillor, would you like to ask questions before or after the presentation? Uh, let's have the presentation. I beg your pardon? Presentation first. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, uh, Mayor, members of council, I, I will also introduce another member of our team, Carolyn Marshall uh, with Dillon Consulting is here tonight. If there are any questions relative to some of the, the more environmental park components, I, I would pass those on to, to Caroline. Okay. Uh, within the context of, of what we've discussed, I'll, I'll try to keep my, my comments relatively brief. We've already discussed, I think everyone has a bit of a sense of, of what this, uh, this five-year uh, facilities master plan review is. Uh, we're looking out to about 2031 as, as far as your current population projections go. This is a technical review of, of the, the 2012 master plan and it's here to inform certainly your decision making but also the, uh, the development charge study uh, that is uh, just uh, getting underway as well. Just to give you a sense of, of the types of information that go into these types of reports, uh, the, the demographic profile, and, and we're starting to slowly get a release of some of the 2016 census data, forecasts, where people live, a uh, little bit of uh, what we know about them, uh, the growth forecasts, and, and that continues to be in flux, but we've used uh, the latest and greatest there, updated inventory and mapping, distribution, uh, progress updates on the 2012 master plan, input from library staff, town staff, and uh, we were able to, to learn a little bit about the Southeast Community Center through their uh, public input sessions. Background document review, industry trends, and Oakville specific usage and participation data where available. So uh, there's, there's quite a foundation upon which uh, this uh, technical review builds. Just a few notable trends, and, and uh, this could be much longer, but we wanted to, to bring a few to highlight to your attention. Um, certainly, you're very well aware of, of the continued growth that Oakville uh, continues to see. Uh, North Oakville in particular is, is now developing and uh, I know that's been a moving target for some time uh, but it, it also is a focus of future capital uh, within this uh, community. Growing diversity, an aging population but yet still uh, growth at, uh, at, at most age levels. Uh, there has been a, a bit of a slowdown in growth in youth sport participation, so if we were to highlight a few things that may have changed since the 2006 and 2012 master plans, and this is something that we're seeing nationwide, it's not Oakville specific necessarily, but uh, certain sports have plateaued uh, to a degree, and, and that's really a, a, a demographic um, uh, contributor, uh, and uh, there's I'm sure other factors that would be sports specific. There are other emerging activities. Last time around, we weren't talking about pickleball, but now here we are. And uh, for those that don't know, it's, it's a lower intensity form of, of uh, cross between badminton and tennis, very, very popular with uh, older adults in, in your community and, and others. There's, as mentioned, we, we mentioned Bill 73 earlier, there have been changes to provincial park policy and planning policy. And, and that's really launching um, a, a reimagination of, of how park design and park provision occurs, particularly in areas of, of urban and uh, residential intensification. And last but certainly not least, we know the library uh, has, uh, has uh, been a leader in, in various forms uh, within the community. They are seeing more and more use from a community gathering and, and social uh, perspective and they have a renewed vision for space that they would like to see achieved through their ongoing efforts and through this master plan. There's a strategic framework, uh, this is in front of you, uh, the, I, a couple slides on this but I would just refer you to the plan if, if, um, to, be, to be brief here tonight. Uh, there's a vision, values and a set of guiding principles and what these are, they do help to uh, guide the recommendations of this uh, master plan review but also assist the town and staff and council with decision making moving forward. Um, there are the, f the five goals as well that speak to um, the, the types of uh, emphasis that we place on facilities planning. 
Now, the plan does contain almost 70 recommendations. I won't go through each of these, uh, but I would like to highlight some of the, the more, uh, the, the bigger ticket uh, type of items and, and any changes that have occurred since 2012. So in terms of community centers, the first, uh, the first uh, item on, on this list, Southeast Community Center, you're very well aware of that that's well underway. It's on your agenda tonight. That continues to be uh, supported moving forward. There's some direction. It does dovetail with what's being recommended for the vision for that facility, including the, the 25 meter pool, gymnasium, fitness, uh, fitness center, and other spaces. Uh, the 16 mile community center, this um, continues to be uh, a, a priority moving forward. However, the delay in, in growth in North Oakville and uh, the usage and subscription rates at community centers uh, along the, the, the more northern portion of the town suggests to us that the timing of that would be best within and around 2026. So uh, that was, I believe, a higher priority for development at the last uh, master plan update. Uh, we've pushed the pause button a little bit on that uh, as a result of, of your available capacity and population growth in that area, but the vision remains the same. That would include a branch library as well. The Palermo area, this has advanced as a priority and um, also supported by a resolution from the library board, I would note. This, uh, this area is, is, is largely developed uh, and uh, is poised to accommodate um, pending the, the availability of any site, which is, is currently a, an issue in that community, uh, but poised to accommodate uh, a branch library first and foremost to get a presence within of that community, more northern, uh, Glen Abbey is, is, very, uh, is a very busy branch. Um, the second phase, or, or potentially a, a subset of the first phase, would involve some additional community space that could be used for a very variety of, of community services programming. Uh, this could be a new model for the municipality. It, it, we're not talking of something the size of a, a Southeast Oakville community center, uh, but something that's a little bit more localized. On library facilities, I've already mentioned a couple of these. Uh, we'll start off with, with Bronte. Uh, one of the, the new accomplishments uh, that the library is very proud of is, is the establishment of, of alternate li uh, library services at uh, the QEP uh, Community and Cultural Center. And that's been received by the community to, to good success uh, and continued success, we hope. Uh, so we'd like to see that extended. Uh, and what that means is it really is sort of um, uh, caused a, a rethink around uh, an established uh, standalone location for a library branch in Bronte. So that's not uh, being recommended as a priority through this master plan update. I've mentioned the Palermo, the 16 mile uh, community uh, libraries and longer term, your growing community, there will be a need for more and, and uh, revitalization of existing. So the central branch through the DCH uh, continues to be on the radar as well as something much longer term in the, uh, the Trafalgar corridor north. Just a, a brief depiction, this is your current suite of community centers and libraries um, and underlaid with your uh, 2016 uh, population densities and in yellow, highlighted in yellow for those, uh, if you have a good view of that, you'll see what's being proposed within this plan over the course of the next 15 to 20 years. Um, equitable distribution, very key to uh, the, the planning that's gone uh, into this. Just a, a couple other items on the indoor recreation front. Uh, our look at arenas suggests that your in number of indoor ice pads is sufficient at this time. We know that's been a big emphasis for council in the, in the past number of years. Uh, we would look to, to review that on a rolling five-year basis. Older adult space is being invested in through the Trafalgar Park Community Center, the, which is the, your uh, Oakville Arena. Uh, redevelopment, we would suggest reviewing the needs of older adult dedicated space once that is, is up and running and in place for a period of time. And as mentioned earlier, a new youth center in East Oakville in the short term. Moving outdoors, and I have a few slides on this. I won't go into the details, but can certainly refer back to these as necessary. You'll see uh, really the whole suite of, of park amenities has been considered. Much of this will be delivered in North Oakville with you know, a build-up population of 55,000 in, in that community. 
Uh, so certainly in terms of sports fields, that's your, your opportunity there. But there will be other gap areas, other uh, development nodes south of Dundas Street that, that would see some potential investment, particularly, you know, we mentioned Merton earlier, uh, tennis courts in, in those communities, pickleball, uh, basketball court. Investing in youth uh, is a theme within this plan. Skateboard parks would be on this slide here, splash pads, and um, some of our, our more policy-based uh, provision uh, type of facilities, dog leash, uh, off leash parks, uh, park washrooms, and, and that's a, a new entry into the master planning realm. We know that that continues to be, uh, we, we hear a lot of demand from, from staff, from the public through staff, uh, for park washrooms and accessible locations along trails and, and major destination parks. There's a need for a policy and standard for that, as well as uh, an overall outdoor recreation strategy that can look at at um, the reconciliation of, of your outdoor pools uh, and splash pads and the programming of parks. So there's a few key uh, takeaways from that. Uh, lastly, uh, parkland challenges and directions. I have a couple slides on this. We've, we've spoken uh, partly to, to parkland here. And um, the, the provision and design of parks is changing. Uh, there's different and uh, new ways of, of doing things. We've, we've mentioned a few on the slides there, but uh, the quality, ex quality of experience is, is becoming much more uh, at the forefront of, of what residents are looking for. And that, that extends from urban parks and squares to different connections within neighborhoods. There's different ways of doing things, strata parks, um, privately owned public spaces, shared streets. Uh, Section 37 is your community bonusing, height and density bonusing and developer provided types of, of amenities. So in terms of some key recommendations moving forward, uh, we do look to maintain that town-wide target of 2.2 hectares per thousand. We look to ensure that park plan dedication policies are updated through your official plan, and there's a number of ways to, to address that through the, the official plan review. And um, a good tie-in to our earlier discussion, the parks and open space strategy, which would address parkland acquisition, provision uh, opportunities in areas of redevelopment and intensification. So thank you for the opportunity and be pleased to continue our conversation. Thank you for the presentation. Councillor Adams, your questions? Uh, a couple of questions. Could you, uh, on the topic of bocce courts, uh, under what circumstances and, and where would we contemplate providing a court? Bocce courts, I would say, are, are in most cases, uh, from, from our work in, in other communities, bocce is not necessarily a growth sport. Um, that being said, uh, we, we're aware that there might be localized demand in, in this community. Uh, your park system is for all, and, and parks, are, sorry, bocce courts are, um, they don't take up a lot of space. They're, they're softer type of amenities. Uh, if there is demonstrated demand, they could be accommodated within a park system in, in an appropriate location. So much like what we would look at for community gardens or for, for our dog off leash areas, we look for a group to step forward and to, to work in partnership with the town to help establish that demand, help establish that that can be a viable amenity within a park. So we've had a group who's, who have expressed interest and I wonder if th uh, that particular group has been consulted and, and to what degree uh, they would satisfy this situation. Uh, the, the master plan does indicate that those conversations are, are uh, encouraged. Uh, they have not been consulted directly for this technical review. Uh, we have not gone out for public consultation as per uh, this, this five-year check-in, uh, not directly on, on those. So uh, that would be a matter that would be referred to implementation. Okay, but in any case, the approval of this... Uh, update wouldn't preclude that kind of conversation from happening? It would okay. not. Great. Uh, the other question I had for you is the, uh, the outdoor fitness equipment. What locations are contemplated? The, the report indicates uh, sort of a generalized nature, but can you be more specific? Uh, the report, you're correct in that the, the report has recommended that the municipality once again establish that as, as a level of service within the community. It, it's become 
uh, a well-received amenity. This is adult, essentially adult fitness equipment within parks. Uh, it's, it's been a well-received amenity in many uh, GTA communities. You would tend to, we don't have specific parks, again, that would be referred to implementation and, and to the Parks and Open Space Department, but you would tend to put these in uh, more community level parks that have nearby parking that have access to a trail system. Hamilton and others have put them along trails to, to good success as well. Uh, so similar to, again, to, to community gardens, making sure that the park can sustain uh, that type of use and really starting starting with one and, and evaluating and, and moving the standard forward from there. Very good. Uh, one other question on playground equipment. There's a 400 meter standard and 800 meter standard being, com being con contemplated. Um, we have some areas that are, I'll say, denser developments like the Uptown Core that's starting to become a much denser area. Uh, how would we serve those communities and when we talk about a 400 or an 800 meter standard, would we also take into account issues like the, um, whether there's a creek in between uh, or some other feature that makes it difficult to get to the park, a, a large arterial road, uh, for example? Uh, absolutely correct. The, the 400 and 800 meter standards would be not as the crow flies, they would be as you and your child walk. Um, so any barriers, including major regional level roads, creeks, railways, uh, that, would, that would truncate that, that service radius. So um, because of the, the, the standard of park provision, in, in particular Village Square provision in North Oakville, that one is 400 meters. Um, it, it's the opportunity provides for that. And uh, for the balance of, of the town, it is 800 meters. But again, I, I don't see, uh, as if, if you're dealing with significant intensification, uh, you would need to assess the, the overall community uh, and, and park facility needs of, of that particular development against what's available. So uh, playgrounds are sort of the, the core element of, of most of your active parks and we would expect that to continue. And uh, can I ask you one other question about uh, the other indoor facilities in particular, things like indoor uh, artificial turf fields. Is there a standard now around uh, how many of those should be provided in a community? There is no standard. Um, each community has addressed them quite differently. The, uh, the providers vary considerably from community to community, uh, private sector, municipal, uh, public sector, or some variation thereof. Uh, we're aware in your community you have a, a partnership around your existing location and that there's been uh, discussions around a, a second location for, for that club. We would expect that, uh, should they come forward with, with needs, it would be under similar, um, uh, similar circumstances and parameters uh, with them justifying that uh, moving forward. So there's no, there's no standard around private ownership, public ownership, uh, dome versus hard cover, uh, any of those issues? We don't, at one point in time, I would say we use sort of a per capita standard just to, to gauge general demand. I, I would say that uh, the demand for, for indoor turf has far exceeded what that standard once was, uh, as, meaning that it's, it's been uh, a good success in terms of utilization. Uh, the business case around them will vary from operator to operator, and as will the, the type of development, um, whether it's, it's dome, uh, pre-engineered, uh, type of structure. They offer a different experience. They offer a different price point. They offer different levels of flexibility or rigidity uh, as a result of that. So uh, we would put anything that, whether it's uh, indoor soccer, gymnastics, 50 meter pool proponents, we would put that back to them to help establish what that business case is uh, for consideration of council at that time. Okay. Uh, how many partnership arrangements are you aware of? Are they very common? Sort of common, rare? Around indoor Around, soccer? So indoor soccer, indoor turf. we have a 50 meter pool being contemplated. As I understand it, there aren't very many 50 meter pools in Ontario. Are any of those done on a partnership basis? That are, I'll say, partnership with a, a non-profit kind of organization? I would, I don't want to, 
no pun intended, but I won't wade too far into those waters. The, um, um, certainly, the indoor, indoor turf, yes, that's, that's very common to have a variety of different partnerships. Uh, it, it comes down to, the, again, the business case, and, and some private operators or not-for-profit operators can, uh, can, can make them viable that way. Uh, the difference when you're talking of uh, an aquatics environment is that the, the price point, the, the, the annual operating subsidy, there will be an annual op operating subsidy and it will be significant. So therefore, the municipalities tend to bear, um, if not completely, the, the entire responsibility in large part uh, what there is. Uh, the one in Toronto, the, the Pan Am Sports Centre, that's, that's a very unique partnership that's more capital funding uh, based, my understanding. but. Uh, the, the City of Toronto is, uh, is, is a major proponent of that. Okay, thank you very much. Councillor Hutchins. Uh, may I ask, you, 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 you list here soccer fields and multi-use fields outdoor. Uh, nowhere does it say rugby fields. Uh, being uh, Coming from uh, England, I tend to look at both, but... Uh, <clears throat> Do you contemplate having any rugby fields for training purposes and things? I mean, we have an outstanding club, the Crusaders, and they provided Olympians and, and, and you know, key personnel in many respects that are way beyond their size. You do have an excellent club. Uh, up until this point, they've been relatively self-sufficient on lands that are leased through uh, through the town is my understanding. Recommendation number 22 does speak to rugby and, uh, and, and that's really to monitor demand should those lands become uh, unavailable or, or should the rugby club uh, exceed, uh, it, the, the needs of the rugby club exceed uh, what those are. If I'm not mistaken, uh, there's some plans to, to look at uh, a field, was it at Glen Ashton? No, okay, I won't say what the park but uh, that is on, on the radar of, of your parks and open space uh, department. Okay, and I, I was also surprised uh, there were 16 uh, all natural, no artificial uh, outdoor skating rinks and uh, only one is being contemplated, you know, Oakville wide somewhere to, I mean, given the global warming, you know, these outdoor rinks without artificial cooling are kind of useless. Uh, particularly as uh, it's the Canadian thing to be able to skate outdoors. I would have thought some sort of provision for having uh, a couple of them sp spread around the town. Uh, outdoor artificial ice rinks uh, do suffer from the, the same effects of, of climate change and, and variable weather. Uh, it's just they can hold the ice a little bit longer, um, certainly, so that they're more reliable from that perspective. What we've recommended, what, what past plans have recommended is that the town establish one uh, at, uh, as a, as a town-wide amenity and to test demand based on that, test uh, the design, test the viability of, of looking to extend that to other areas if, if the demand were to warrant. So uh, this is a case where we wanted to make sure that um, you, you were comfortable with the, the usage and uh, comfortable with the planning of that before you start to roll it out more broadly. So that's within the five-year plan. That's the, the expectation is to establish the one at the uh, Trafalgar Park. Okay, so the, there are, are going to be more. It's not just one for the whole of Oakville. It, it would be reevaluated as part of your next five-year plan. Councillor Noel. Thank you very much, Your Worship. Um, I just—I have actually no questions, but I have a point of clarification. Um, uh, our friend uh, referenced the uh, the library board, and as you know, I chair the library board, and um, we had a great deal of discussion around the recommendations contained in this uh, report. And I just thought I'd amplify uh, a point, um, two points actually. One is that uh, um, our friend mentioned uh, with respect to the board's resolution. Um, uh, pertaining to Palermo, that resolution actually pertained to both Palermo and 16 Mile Creek. We gave each one an equal weighting. We understand that Palermo is not only void of library services, but it's a void of all municipal services. So there's a bit of a, uh, there's a larger corporate, uh, I think, uh, interest in, in doing something there. But 16 Mile Creek, where the majority of the North Oakville growth is currently happening, where the demand is is, is dramatic and the board uh, in their resolution made it very clear that that we are interested in both uh, um, 
I don't think the motion said it, but certainly in the discussion, we wanted a more um, uh, timely uh, uh, resolution to the issue in North Oakville because of the lack of facilities, but the motion referred specifically to some sort of temporary facilities in both of those communities, which I believe uh, um, uh, have been referenced before. Uh, and and this, is, this is most um, uh, clearly borne out on a table you'll find on page 98 of the report or 112, 117 of the agenda, which actually talks about our per capita square footage rate here in Oakville compared to our comparative municipalities as well as uh, um, uh, across uh, Canada. We are at 0.49 square feet per capita. Uh, the average is 0.54 and our friends in Burlington are at 0.57. So we are really behind the eight ball on this issue. You all know it's one of the single most um, respected and uh, um, uh, appreciated services that we have in our town offerings. That's borne out every time we do one of our surveys. So it, the board really felt it important to emphasize the importance of, of finding uh, not just longer term solutions, but shorter term solutions to help bolster that while we wait for the longer term build out. So we're very pleased that uh, uh, that, that was raised tonight. Um, your library board is very anxious to see uh, uh, an opportunity to answer some of those, uh, those burning needs uh, that we're finding in the town of Oakville for the whole package and, and basket of, of services that we're now offering uh, through OPL both now and in relation to our incredibly exciting new strategic plan we're going to come back and talk to you about in a couple weeks. All right. Thank you, Councillor Noel, for that. Councillor Grant. J just quickly, and I, I apologize, I was following along as you were speaking. Did you mention that there's been a drop-off in youth activity in general? Uh, there's been a steadying of, of uh, registration at several sports, so uh, ice sports in general, um, some field sports now, that's not exclusive to all of them, that was a, a general trend that we're seeing, but compared to where Oakville was five or ten years ago, where those sports in particular were, were burgeoning, uh, there's been a maturation of, of uh, registration for, for many of those. Um, Baseball is one that's been a little bit different as of late as, as the Blue Jays have had more success, so there's, there's been a little bit more, we'll see if that holds, um, but there's been a little bit more of a, of a bump there. So it's, it's worth monitoring. I, I'm interested because uh, going through this, I, I realize that we are building a lot of spaces for community groups, uh, such as the swim club or the, the soccer group to practice, but we don't have a lot of free play open space, really, that we're contemplating. And I think the concern there then is that uh, if, if we continue to build places for organized groups to perform and fall behind on free, place, you know, free play areas for children, um, we may be not raising a community or a, a, a bunch of youth that will be interested in playing sports. They'll be more interested in sitting in front of their Xbox or whatever the future will hold. Um, the, are we doing anything to contemplate how to implement free play spaces within the community? Absolutely, uh, two, two big things to, to take away. One is that the, um, the, the recalibration of, of field needs will provide for more, more opportunity, particularly within parks in North Oakville to implement and provide non-permitted casual use types of spaces. So uh, the, the parks distribution plan in, in prior years has really filled a lot of those nooks and crannies up with soccer fields. There will still be many soccer fields, uh, but there's more of an op there are probably fewer moving forward than were once contemplated, freeing that up. Uh, secondly, the plan recommends an outdoor recreation strategy, and this would be ways to activate those parks. Uh, we, we know that they're, they're well permitted for, uh, for organized sport, uh, but your, your town offers a whole host of, of registered programs. Many of those programs are indoors. Uh, there's uh, a desire to, to move more of them outdoors and to see what they can do within parks. So whether that's through a, a registered uh, type of use, drop-in, or, or casual, that's uh, definitely part of sort of the reimagination of, of parks, as, as we're calling it, uh, in many communities. Great. I look forward to that. Then just to be editorial, I, I think it's a shame that groups of children can't just get together and have a pickup game somewhere these days. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor. I invite you to my street. You can join the pickup game anytime you want. We have two at all hours. 
competing basketball pickup games is what they are. Um, all right, thank you very much for the presentation. Um, Council, can I find a mover and seconder for our discussion item number one? Councillor Giddings is moving it. Councillor Knoll is seconding it. All those in favor? Opposed, if any, that's carried. Thank you, Council. Now, the item for receipt uh, in discussion item two, I just want to call your attention to uh, page 168 of that. And on page 168, you'll see a series of bullets. And um, I just want to call your attention to the last sentence of the last bullet. Further refinement of the revenue estimates will be presented in June as part of the draft amendments to the plan following public input. This is a reference to uh, item number three, and if you'll turn with me to page 180 and item number three, you'll find at the bottom of page 180 a, a header, financial impacts, and, uh, and you, will, you will find there in its la um, last sentence, Please note a more detailed discussion on the financial impact can be found in the report from the Finance Department entabled, entitled Financial Overview, Former Oakville Trafalgar Memorial Hospital OTMH Lands included in the, uh, in the package here. And um, uh, what staff are asking us to do when we get to three is to provide direction on the enhancements and what you've seen in the reports is that in a gross, uh, at a gross level, uh, to my eye, there appears to be sufficient revenue hypothetically showing to afford the extras. And what staff are asking for when we digest item number two and then get to item number three is for us to provide that direction. So I just wanted to point that out in case anybody was confused about the funding of these things and whether it had been addressed or not. And with that, I'll ask for questions on item number two. Councillor Giddings. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I appreciate the uh, looking at them combined. In terms of uh, the second piece, I've received a number of quest, uh, number of queries from people uh, on the specific report saying it outlines the possible costs very well. What it doesn't cover is the uh, the method of paying them. It talks about a, a projected impact to the uh, to the tax uh, tax rate. It doesn't talk about the sale of properties or land. Uh, just wondering if we could have a brief update from staff on current projections, or if it's too early for that. Uh, the items they're going to go into it in terms of the properties on the hospital land as well as Chisholm, uh, Brantwood, and Lynbrook. So, Councillor, um, I should have read the first sentence of the last bullet because the, the information that we're given there is that the net revenue associated with the options included in the planning report ranged from 20 to 33 million and um, the, the June report will give us finer detail at that time. And, uh, and, and obviously the amount of sales of land is contingent on what you choose to try to fund. So it's a chicken and egg question, isn't it? It certainly is. Uh, well, perhaps we could uh, say that it would, it's similar to the uh, Queen Elizabeth Park Community and Cultural Center when uh, the total bill was divided up, in that case among more partners but uh, it was pretty well self-covering, and that's been the intent all along. Well, I've always taken the view that this is one town and that everyone can go to any, any facility, and I've always resisted enclave thinking, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go down with that ship. Uh, this is one town. Uh, if you want arts and culture programming, for example, for your children, you are best served to go to Queen Elizabeth Park Community, Community and Cultural Center, no matter where you live, and, and so on. In, uh, in, in field sports, in ice sports, we play all over town. Um, I, I continue to lament anyone who puts forward a kind of uh, gated community concept where 
this is mine and it's not yours. That's, that's not the way Oakville has ever worked. I appreciate that and I agree fully. I was just trying to uh, lay some of the questions that had uh, interism. I, I understand fully and I and uh, happy to move them at the appropriate time. Thank you. Um, given your comments regarding the, the broad net that you're um, alluding to and that we're not getting down into details, can I ask at least uh, in regards to the program enhancements, if I could understand a little more fully um, what's being incorporated with, say, the fitness center, uh, the walking track, and the therapy pool in terms of the cost factor. Um, reason being the fitness center, I think, at um, Trafalgar Park was around 400 and some odd thousand. Now, granted, that was a much more modest, but I just want to sort of understand, is it the size of the room, is it the equipment that's being uh, provided, or is it the varying uh, programs that you're trying to provide? I think those are excellent questions. Mr. Brennan would be glad to answer them. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, at Trafalgar Park Community Center, we certainly had a bit of a unique situation. We had already done some of the design because we had decided that the, we were going to keep the trusses in the building to the east and that the community center was going to be, sorry, the opposite to the west, and the community center was going to be to the east. We had already committed to a pine room and a two-story gymnasium. So when we contemplated the fitness center, what we really were doing was to push out the walls that were over the pine room, and we only had to incur the cost of those two walls as well as the finishes that were on the inside. So that was a very reasonable amount of money uh, to do that. As well, it's much smaller than what we are proposing at uh, Southeast Community Centre because there is no, there was no um, uh, aerobic studio included at Trafalgar Park. We really did not have the time, or sorry, the space. We were going to rely on the gymnasium to, to accommodate those, those types of programs. So it's much smaller in scale and also we were just really looking at the cost per square foot for a facility of that size. Okay, so does that come into play with the walking track then too? Is it the, the sheer volume or size that you're dealing with versus what's being offered at Trafalgar? Absolutely, and as well, um, um, the cost associated with the one at Southeast, not unlike Trafalgar Park, is in an elevated situation, so you have to incorporate stairs as well as an elevator to accommodate accessibility. Thank you very much. Councillor O'Meara. Thank you, Worship. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to understand again um, the, the numbers here because we're, we're asking to support a 30 million base funding uh, and, and it could be 20 or it could be 30. The additional elements are about eight million, um, which is more or less, you know, give or take a million, which I don't want to sound uh, um, flippant about it, but is the difference between what we could or could not expect. Um, but we seem to have it down exactly to what it would be in terms of the tax levy impact, which is a third of our entire tax increase last year. Um, or if we have the amenities, then it would be 0.68. So I, I guess I'm having troubles, and I know it's the chicken and the egg, but, you know, well, let's approve spending it, and we'll figure out how we're going to pay for it in a month or two, but we're asking staff to proceed with extras um, without that information about, you know, what we're going to get out of the, the, the revenue side. I have a lot of troubles approving a $1.8 million catwalk or a $2.4 million fitness center or, you know, the, the, the other uh, amenities when I don't know where that money's coming from. And certainly to ask it to come out of the tax levy um, without knowing whether it's going to come out of sales of property, I, I have a problem um, making that decision today uh, without that information. So I guess I would ask staff, um, how can you help me make that decision? Or what sort of confirmation do I have that if we direct you to proceed down an avenue financially now that we're, we're you know, those revenues are, are gonna balance out? 
Um, through you, Mr. Mayor, the, the capital cost of the, the construction of the amenities would come from one funding source. The tax levy impact is related to the whole life cost of it. So once you've built it, you have to maintain it, keep it in a state of good repair. That's the cost that would be on the operating budget, which is the 0.68, and that's just based on the whole life cost. So it's just taking that amount divided by 30 years. The capital cost, right now the community center is funded one third from development charges. The rest is coming from reserves, primarily the capital reserve, as an interim funding source. The additional amenities would likely have to come from probably the capital reserve as well, again, as an interim funding source. The sale of the lots, right now it's a very high level estimate that will be refined in June. That revenue it would be expected would go back into the reserve so that funding's available in the future for future needs townwide. Okay, well, I, I appreciate that. And I, and I know it's gonna come back and we can make our decision um, in June when we've got further accurate um, numbers on that. I. I uh, um, you know, you know, we dip into our reserves quite frequently for these types of things. And when we're making additional decisions to pull out of our reserves, um, I think it's incumbent on all of us to understand what, what sort of revenues are going to come out of the sale of that. So I appreciate the clarification. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Mayor. Councillor Adams. Uh, uh, first of all, just a clarification. I understand that we're actually not making a decision tonight. We're the recommendation and the motion that's been put forward is to move the uh, decision making to June 26th. Um, is that not correct? Right. Um, that's what it says. Uh, the other is that um, I believe staff have a couple of presentations lined up for us uh, that I think would be helpful for the community as well to see and I wonder if our staff could go through those. Mayor and members of council, you have uh, three reports in front of you today and I'm going to just provide a very brief overview once I get the presentation up on the screen, if you just give me one second. So the three reports as you have already started on the, is the financial review, the details on the Southeast Community Centre itself, uh, what is the um, amenities that have been uh, looked at in terms of the existing facility and then additional amenities that we've heard from the public. And the last report is actually on the site uh, master plan options. Uh, we will be going out to the community uh, both online, out to stakeholders, and June 1st we've scheduled a public consultation with the community to try and understand uh, what is their feedback or input into the site master plan so that we can gather that in order to report back to Council in late June uh, with a uh, recommendation relative to the site master plan. So just a quick uh, background. The South uh, Central Public Land Study was actually approved by Council in 2013 after quite an extensive public consultation um, with, with this community. The two key directions that came out of that was that Council endorsed the land use plans for the Chisholm site as well as the Brentwood site and both of those are well underway. The Chisholm has gone through all of its approval process and Brentwood is currently out for uh, requests for proposals. On the OTMH site, Council approved in principle the land use plan and they identified three elements that would be on the site, the community centre, the parkland and the residential development. And you recognized at that time that the final details of the actual site plan needed to consider some of the environmental impacts on the site, what was the condition of all the buildings, parking garage, as well as the heritage elements on the site so that we could then do the detailed work, which is what we're doing at this point in time, now that we understand all those broader elements. So the commitment that we've made to the community throughout this program is to uh, work with them in order to provide a, a vibrant new community uh, park, uh, community centre, and to provide for residential options. And we've done that through a series of open houses that we've held uh, back in November of 2015. We started with an overall open house which really walked the community through what, all the changes that would happen on the site, starting with the, the demolition, 
uh, first of all, securing the site, the demolition, all the studies that needed to be done, and moving forward into the, uh, the uh, community center analysis and the site plan itself. Uh, so there was specific consultation on the community center that was held in December and March, as well as a demolition where you actually have received that report and given direction on the demolition, and that came out of quite a good consultation with the community. And more recently, we've been out to the uh, residents associations. Uh, you'll see them listed there, and we still have to go to the uh, Oakville Lakeside Residents Association on May 17th in order to introduce them to uh, the site plans more recently, but the overall program in total. So with that, I'll turn the, the presentation over to Nancy on the financial overview um, so that she can provide some general comments on that. Uh, we then have a presentation from Michael Brennan on this, the South Central Community Centre itself. Um, and then finally with uh, Gabe Charles on the uh, master site plan. Through you, Mr. Mayor, I, I won't go into too much detail. The report in item two is meant to be a companion report to the reports from the Parks and Recreation Department as well as Planning Services. And it provides a high level financial overview of the cost um, of developing the site as well as the community centre and, and the uh, park. Uh, it does include both the capital costs and the long term or life cycle costs which I'll, I'll go through in a second. These are just preliminary estimates. They, you know, we're, we're giving you a range of plus or minus 15%. The final cost will be determined once the detailed design of the community centre is, is done as well as the market conditions at the time of construction. And currently in the 10-year budget, there is $29.2 million for the community centre as well as $530,000 for a neighbourhood park. And right now, one-third of that community centre, um, without any optional amenities, is funded from development charges. The rest of the site development costs are being funded from reserves. And again, the intent is that revenue from sale of land would replenish those reserves. So the preliminary cost estimate, to date we've spent about $150,000 on legal fees um, and various studies. As well, there's a budget of $12.3 million for the demolition costs. We've incurred $2 million in costs so far, and that's to create the demolition plan, the site fencing, um, environmental assessments, things like that. The community centre estimate has been revised to $30 million, and that's based on more recent cost estimates, as well as the cost of remediating the lands. And then the uh, optional items, or amenities, that um, will be highlighted in uh, the report from Parks and Recreation would total $8 million if Council chooses to do them. So the 40,000 square foot facility is the community centre, I don't want to say basic community centre, it's a, a community centre with uh, a pool to replace Centennial Pool, a gymnasium, um, community space, uh, etc. The optional amenities for Council to decide would add 13,000 square feet. So that would bring the capital cost of the community centre to 38 million, the total cost of developing the site to about $50.5 million. Um, if all of the optional amenities were approved, it would add 13,000 square feet to the site, so 53,000 square feet for the building. Uh, it is possible that would require a second floor, and the cost estimate um, included in the report estimates it at between six hundred dollars and $750,000. As well, the cost for the community centre assumes that it's, it's constructed separate from the old hos uh, high school. If it was incorporated in the high school, it would add about $1.2 million to the cost. So while I, the last slide talked about the capital cost of building it, the whole life cost of the community centre is estimated at $61.4 million, and that includes the original $30 million to construct it, as well as the operating maintenance and capital replacement cost over the 30-year life cycle of the building to keep it in a state of good repair and extend the life for an additional 30 years. So the tax levy impact is calculated on that, just taking the $31.4 million estimate divided by the, the 30 years, it would add, based on the 2017 tax levy, about 0.58 to the tax levy. That's to run the building. Any programming um, costs and revenues would be in addition, and that would come once this community centre was designed and, and what the programming is in it. So that would all come forward in future reports. Uh, if the optional amenities were approved, they would add $12 million to the whole life cost. $5 million of that would be the uh, operating maintenance cost. So that's what would bring the tax levy impact going forward to about 6.68%. So that would need to be funded in the operating budget, would include the transfer to the building maintenance reserve, all of the ongoing maintenance of the facility. 
As well, uh, the three site development options are outlined in the report from planning services. Um, those are preliminary options and as Jane said, they will come back at the end of June um, with some draft recommendations. The preliminary revenue estimates based on those options right now are 20.4 million to 33.6 million. That will be refined when we come back in June. Um, and currently the park cost for 0.3 of a hectare, while we budgeted 500, 530,000 based on some site remediation that we know will be required, that cost estimate is now a million dollars. That will change depending on the size of the park and that again will be determined once the site development is um, finalized. So the recommendation in this report is that it be received for information and I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Ms. Sully. Uh, Councillor Adams. Can I just ask you a question about the uh, expected tax levy impact? How is the closure of the Centennial Pool space dealt with financially? Is there any netting out of the, the funds that would be going to Centennial right now? So right now, because that's an older facility and we didn't at that time transfer money into a building maintenance reserve fund, so there wouldn't be that to eliminate, but there are operating costs associated with Centennial or capital costs, which absolutely would would uh, help to mitigate these costs. So that's not included in the, no, in it's the figures not. here. So there are, there are some savings to be had out of the uh, closure of that facility that would offset the impact that's shown here. Uh, yes, there would be. Okay, thank you. Can we can we get those numbers later on? Certainly. Thank you. Um, Councillor Hutchins. Thank you. Um, the high school that's been found before we had assumed that it was probably going to be knocked down as part of the demolition because it was reportedly in bad shape, but that has changed. And now we're talking about changing it to become a senior's home of some sort, potentially. Uh, two questions on that. The 12.3 million for demolition, has, did that affect that number at all? Did that reduce that number? Now we know it's not going to be knocked down? No, that's not included in that number. So the, the high school is totally separate. Okay. Does this, does the extra people going to be living uh, on a more dense uh, community, uh, uh, if it's made for seniors and so on, does that affect the 29 unit, uh, 29 people per hectare uh, calculations at all on the site? I mean, obviously the more, if you put the higher density in one spot, it means you don't have to necessarily sell others. Uh, yes, as I understand the density calculation, it is based on the townhouses and the residential lots. It doesn't assume every, anything for the, um, uh, the high school site right now. And when Gabe Charles from planning comes up and does that presentation, he can clarify that point. But that's my understanding to date. Okay, so that might affect things as well. It would. Okay, thank you. Uh, when we, when we uh, take this up again in June, would we be able to have um, the hypothetical where necessary and the actual where, where it exists, comparable tax impact figures for our other recs, for all our other rec centers? Certainly we could provide that. Great. Um, if there's no other questions, is there a mover and seconder to receive? Councillor Hutchins, Councillor Giddings, all in favor? Carried and received. Now, item number three. Mr. Brandon, what have you got for us? Get out of here first. Uh, Mr. Mayor, members of council, thank you very much for allowing me to present this evening. 
And I do apologize since I'm for fourth on the roster, some of this will be a bit uh, repetitive, so I will go quickly through some of it. Uh, as you have already heard, the 2012 Parks Recreation Library Master Plan suggested a new multi-generational community center in southeast Oakville, as is required to serve the existing residents as well as long-term population growth, and that the design should consider the indoor pool to replace Centennial, a gymnasium, active living space, multi-purpose space, and community rooms. And a decision as to where the suitable and available sites would be determined through the South Central Public Land Study. Uh, the land study was approved in principle in 2013 and a path forward was developed for the former hospital site lands. The South Central Public Land Study recommended that the former hospital lands should include a community centre, parkland and residential development and as noted already, Southeast Community Centre at present, the current base program is $30 million for a facility of approximately 40,000 square feet. Speaking a little to the public consultation, we've heard from Mr. DeRosa. Um, residents were given many opportunities for input and recommendations through stakeholder meetings, public meetings, website submissions, and social media. Um, we actually began with the coalition and met with the residents associations, got their views of things, and then we actually um, had a number of uh, meetings at Town Hall, uh, two of which were bookended to the old, more open house uh, process for the entire hospital site and had very, very good uh, uh, representation there. Certainly from our two consultations, there were over 200 people involved. And uh, that didn't stop. We certainly got lots of uh, telephone calls and emails that followed that provided more input to the process. So we ended up with more than 400 contributions and 700 recommendations. Some of the common themes that came out of that process were the accessibility and inclusive programming for all ages. There was a clear, recommend, clear understanding that it was a, a mature uh, community at present, but it was beginning slightly to turn over and more young families were moving into the area, and it was expected that that would continue on an ongoing basis. There was also opportunities for congregation and socialization. This was uh, very much a theme through all of the consultations. There was a feeling that this community centre would act as a community hub and that a sense of community could be developed uh, with the neighbourhood. It's also a clear indication that there was a desire for a con connectivity between the community centre and the green space. Uh, we have, as a staff, uh, gone out to see a number of uh, additional community centres and pools, as referenced by uh, Mr. Schemelt, and certainly we saw some good examples of how uh, a community centre and the community rooms can have a direct connection uh, out to the park itself. We saw situations where a community room would have sliding glass doors out into a patio, and look directly out into the parkland, that was very desirable. We also saw on the main floor where we could open up the doors and actually have the park as part of the community centre itself. Very much a desire for the use of natural light. Uh, co uh, a community as event space was very much desirable, as well as arts and cultural programming. Residents did, as you've no noted, uh, request con consideration for a number of additional amenities, and they include the fitness centre, the expansion of the existing full-size gym to a double gym, a therapeutic tank in the natatorium area, a walking track, and consideration for a 50-meter pool. I do note that there were several other requests, um, very small in nature, from several individuals, but thought they meant they should be referenced. There was some people who be believe that there should be a branch library here at this community centre. There was also a bit of a petition going around. I don't know if members of council received it, but there is a running group uh, in the north of Oakville, we're really um, keen on having a 200 meter indoor training facility, proper facility for those who are runners, and there are very many of them in Oakville. However, just a little bit of um, research suggested that that would be really a 40 or 50,000 square foot facility. And also there were individuals uh, from our um, bowling group down in the, uh, on King Street that suggested that an indoor bowling green facility be considered, and that this is becoming quite popular in Great Britain. So as you've noted, the community-based program is estimated at $30 million, 40,000 square feet, 25-meter pool, a gymnasium, active living space, multi-purpose space, and community rooms. There was definitely a desire for uh, a fitness center, had an additional capital cost of 2.46 million, adding 5,000 square feet. And certainly fitness centers do promote active living and are a catalyst to positive health and well-being in the community. And as noted by several, um, 
They are, have become key components in all of our community centers, all our major centers all include a fitness center. And staff within the center certainly have oversight of the center itself, as well as responsibility for a broad range of other programs for all ages. And the 2017 master plan reviewed, uh, review recommended consideration be given. From gymnasia, the gymnasiums are very valued com commodities in this municipality and they can provide for a broad range of activities for all ages. Uh, we currently have gymnasiums at Glen Abbey and Iroquois Ridge and QEP, but we rely fairly heavily for our community groups to access community schools through our reciprocal agreement. Indoor racket sports have also gained a significant amount of po uh, popularity in recent years with uh, games such as badminton and pickleball seeing the greatest gains. 2017 master plan certainly identified strong usage levels and increased demands for that commodity. So the request is to increase the size of the gym from a single gym to a double gym. The photos you see on the left is a uh, single size gym at Glen Abbey with, you can see it could accommodate three courts. The one on the right is a double gym at uh, Queen Elizabeth Park Community Center. There was certainly a lot of discussion about warm water access, uh, conducive to therapeutic programming. The additional capital cost at $2.34 million and additional space at 4,500 square feet. And I should add that the 4,500 square feet um, probably did not envision a pool quite the size that Mr. Schemmel had referenced. Uh, this includes not only the pool, but the deck space, the additional uh, mechanical space would be required for filtration and so on and heating, and um, potentially a little bit of extra to change facilities for, to accommodate the second tank. Certainly providing opportunities for programs and services addressing conditions of our arthritis and fibromyalgia would be a great opportunity. Uh, this would be the first therapeutic pool offered through the municipality. Certainly one exists at the YMCA and I know there is one in the new hospital, but certainly would give us an opportunity to provide a broad range of programs and probably attract people from across the community, not just from that local area. And consideration for a th therapeutic pool was recommended in the 2017 master plan review. The walking track adds uh, $1.8 million and 2,500 square feet. Uh, again, walking tracks have become very popular in recent years. We have just uh, managed to incorporate one into the Trafalgar Park Community Center. People are excited about it coming. And the ability to accommodate low impact cardiovascular activity makes them very popular in centers where older adults are present. They're often adjacent to fitness centers and act as an, an, another amenity. And residents identified a walking track as a desired amenity in the 2017 master plan certainly supports its consideration. 50 meter pool. Uh, we've had a lot of conversations about the 50 meter pool. Uh, we have done a fair amount of additional research and analysis. We certainly contracted the service of uh, John Frittenberg and the JF group to analyze the capital and operating implications of a 50 meter pool configuration. And certainly the Oakville Aquatic Club was very involved in that process. The added space is estimated at 24,000 square feet and I know that there have been discussions that um, that size and that price tag could probably come down somewhat and uh, I guess that will take a little bit of further investigation. I did want to just say that um, the, the department, the Recreation and Culture Department and the town in general has had a very long positive working relationship with the Oakville Aquatic Club. Uh, personally, I've been involved with them since 2001 when we built Iroquois Ridge Community Center. And they have been very uh, cooperative, collaborative, and respectful in their approach. And I applaud their efforts. Um, certainly when they came forward in 2013, there was a standalone pool suggestion and the estimated costs were 29 million to 42. So that was a difficult pill to swallow and as well, there were some concerns about the pool's ability to provide programming for the community. And the challenges, of course, are the depth of the water and the temperature of the water. Um, aquatic uh, uh, swimmers prefer, sorry, competitive swimmers prefer a, a singular depth and certainly deeper than we would normally have in a, in a traditional community pool. And temperature requests are typically in the 80 to 82 degree frame. But there has been a lot of design uh, changes in the last number of years. We visited a pool in uh, Windsor with uh, David and certainly the movable floor that he referenced could certainly alleviate some of the challenges of providing community programming in that pool. And a new heated bulkhead, another amenity that's been added in the last little while, does allow you to have two temperatures in the pool that's divided by a bulkhead. 
I'm not sure we could get to the warm water temperatures that have been referenced uh, previously, but maybe two or three degrees higher than what would be in the balance of the training tank. During public consultations, as noted by several of the members of the Residents Association, it was clear that they had some concerns about the size and scope that would be added by a 50 meter pool configuration with the estimated additional uh, square footage of 24,000. Costs again have been ad identified at 16 to $20 million. And as well, the operating costs and staffing levels of a 50 meter pool would exceed, exceed those of a 25 meter pool. From a next steps perspective, we've talked about this already. June 1st, there will be a public consultation on the use of the formal hospital lands uh, site with a presentation then going to council on the 26th of June or at another alternatively selected date by the mayor. And as well, we are in the process right now of selecting the architect general contractor to begin the design process. And that concludes my presentation. I answer questions if I'm able. There might be some. Councillor Adams. Thank you very much. I have a couple of questions about the 50 meter pool issue. Um, how could the, the 50 meter pool group uh, legitimately have an opportunity to be considered? What would they, what would they have to do um, in order to satisfy uh, the various issues that have been put forward? Well, I pers well, personally, I believe that the biggest issue are the costs associated with the construction of the pool and maybe the appropriateness of the site. Uh, adding 24,000 square feet to an existing building, particularly if you adopt some of the amenities that we have asked for in addition, would, would make the size of the building quite large. It might even have some effect on the available parkland, although we might hear more about that from, from Mr. Charles in, uh, in the planning department. Um, from a programming perspective, they have suggested that there, are, there is an unmet need um, in the community, and that has not been uh, verified. Certainly they have done all the negotiations with those groups and we would certainly want to talk to those groups and get a commitment as to what their times are. We've been, they've been talking about 2,700 or 2,800 additional rental hours and uh, that may be a reality, but at this point we really don't know that. Um, part of the challenge is that everybody wants the pool at the same time, not unlike our hockey arenas. Uh, we have lots of pool time at two o'clock in the afternoon, but. Uh, Times when children are available to train and when people want to take swimming lessons typically are at the same time. Now, I will say that the Oakville Aquatic Club takes many, many hours early morning. I watch those kids train from 5.30 to 7.30 and wonder how they get through the day. Um, but from a training perspective and a pool perspective, from a community programming perspective, often it's at the same time. That's when the requests are. So I get there, there needs to be further investigation, I suppose. Um, I think we have bought some time by not having this decision made until the end of June. Uh, but that's about all I could comment. Okay. And uh, the, the issues that were raised earlier about traffic issues, are they legitimate? Would there be significant traffic? Brought well, to well I do believe that if we are to venture into building a 50 meter pool that we are going to be hosting swim meets. Um, I think we would be criticized if we were to build a 50 meter pool with a, without appropriate uh, seating for people to watch meets. I've already heard about the potential to host the the, uh, the Halton uh, school uh, swim meets and other meets that they host during the year. I don't think they're of a, of a large, large nature. I think there are 50 meter pools in the GTA that would accommodate those types of meets because they have more seating. But I think there's little doubt that there would be some traffic congestion centered around uh, the meets that they have at, at the facility. Okay. Um, we already have meets, for example, at Iroquois Ridge. Uh, we do and they fill up the parking lot and I'd say they, they kick out the regular users for a weekend or something like that. Is that similar to what would be experienced? Well, we host, uh, the Oakville Aquatic Host Club hosts two major meets annually at Iroquois Ridge. Uh, one a three day meet and one a two day meet. Uh, we do have accommodation for 300, uh, seating capacity for 300. We do have a reciprocal agreement with the, board, with the school next door to use their uh, parking facility, so that certainly assists. We have a written agreement, so we communicate with each other to ensure that we're not hosting meets at the same time or events at the same time, I should say. Um, we do have 500 parking spots available in the parking garage. Um, it just depends on the size of the meets, and we don't have a lot of information on that. Okay. Uh, there, there was a comment made uh, earlier that they 
they were looking for at least eight weeks to be able to do some review work on it. Um, if a decision's made on uh, June 26, sounds like that cuts it off. Does that not? Well, I think that would be at the discretion of council. I think that uh, Mayor Burton has also suggested that um, decisions can be changed or modified on a go-forward basis. However, we do need to, if we are going to meet the time frame of the fall of 2020, we do need to start to de start the design process. Um, we still haven't taken down the hospital yet, and a lot of the design will take a, a fair amount of, of time to do properly. So what's the drop dead date for that uh, decision? What's the decision point that's required around the pool? When does that have to happen? I, I believe to be on time for the fall of 2020. It, it can't be delayed much past the end of June or into the summer. So it, it, can it go eight weeks? Can it go to our July meetings? I'm going to defer to my, uh, my commissioner on this one. Through you, Mr. Chair, uh, there's a couple of issues. There's the issue of whether or not um, we can look at how we could accommodate the 50-meter pool at South Central, but there's also the issue of the fundraising feasibility study yeah. because um, that would also play into any decision that we would want to make going forward as to what the contribution would be from the community group and whether or not they would actually be able to raise that money uh, in, a, in a timely fashion because that would potentially impact the overall funding of the project if we had built in a, a specific community contribution. As an alternative for the group, what we may want to consider as an option is that the master plan gets reviewed every five years. So uh, the next new plan will be in 2022. Uh, I would suggest that what the group might want to do is consider that option for when we come forward with the development of the new plan. It would give them time to actually do a fairly lengthy uh, feasibility study and determine whether or not they are able to raise that money uh, from the community. And it would be a second opportunity for them to look at where a 50 meter pool would be and whether it was going to be supported over the longer term. Okay, so I, which I, which I think fairly certainly puts it into the 2026 20, 16 mile uh, sports complex. Uh, location and zone. Uh, thank you very much. I, I guess uh, council will have to think about it and uh, see what we get from the swim club. Councillor Giddings. Thank you. Not asking you to look in your crystal ball, but the 2026 uh, Northern Community Centre. Is that the type of site that would be able to house it? Because at that point, the South Central facility is going to be built. And given the amount of space that this takes up, and my understanding, having spent a lot of time driving people to 530 practices, it's more of a regional facility. We'd be drawing from Burlington, our friends in Burlington, Etobicoke, Halton Hills, Georgetown, Guelph, whatever. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, uh, North Park has always been contemplated as a sports centre of excellence um, right from when we built a 16-mile arena. So what we would have to do uh, in terms of looking at how we might accommodate uh, a 50-metre pool would be looking at a transportation study and looking at, at ways that we could actually manage any sort of traffic congestion and any impact on um, that broader neighbourhood. So you mentioned traffic congestion. That would be inclusive of uh, the existing rinks, the new pool. What else would fall into that? So one of the so that site um, would have a, a a high school immediately to the south of it south. at some point. It would uh, obviously have the existing arena. It would have a library. It would have a community center, and conceivably, it could have a 50 meter pool. And then, of course, we have the outdoor fields as well. There's an off-leash dog park contemplated. There's a BMX uh, park contemplated. There's the possibility of maybe putting cricket there, uh, a potential dome. It, the space gets extremely tight, so we would really need to look at 
um, how the space is going to be used, and the fact that we would probably end up having a fairly large number of tournaments there. The library would be about 15,000 square feet, and we anticipate uh, that because of the, the need up there, uh, the library would probably be overloaded pretty much from opening day. I appreciate the details. Councillor Lapworth. Thank you, Mr. Mercer. You, um, I have a couple of items. Um, the first one is um, these new gym facilities that we're considering building, um, would they support a three volleyball court, three volleyball courts in the same, under the same roof? A, a, sing, uh, a single gym, which is proposed for the current um, program, would certainly support three courts, whether it be volleyball, badminton, or pickleball. Okay, and the other one is, um, thank you for that, the other one is um, indoor tennis. Now, the technology for these you know, inflatable domes now is significantly improved uh, over, over the past few years. In fact, the Oakville Soccer Club were considering putting a dome over one of their soccer pitches. Um, is this something that we could do in partnership with, say, one of the, one of the major tennis clubs in town? I'm, I, I suppose anything could be con contemplated at North Park. Um, I'm not familiar with indoor, t well, indoor tennis, you mean from a dome perspective. I mean, as, as Commissioner Bell has indicated, we are, there's quite, a, there's quite a bit of programming that's already anticipated there. Uh, I mean, I suppose anything is, is possible, but it will all be prioritized as to what are the greatest needs of the community. Thank you, Councillor Lapworth. Councillor Lischina. Thank you, Your, Your Worship. The selection of architect uh, general contractor, is this going to be uh, the same process as what we're doing for Trafalgar Park? Is that? That, is, that is correct, integrated project delivery. Thank you very much. Councillor Adams again. Sorry, I just wanted to ask a follow-up question about the uh, the number of users that were identified for a 50-meter pool had a long list of, of users. Uh, how much of that is cannibalization from our other locations? Well, I, I believe that the, the, the feeling of the Oakville Aquatic Club is that um, there is enough, uh, there are enough groups that might want to move to the 50 meter pool that we would open up space in our other areas for additional rentals and additional programming. Um, we do have a, a fairly comprehensive report from JF Group and it might be to our best interest to provide that to Council at some point. We're almost at the very final uh, stages of that. I know that he provided a copy to, to, to David today. I haven't had the opportunity to read it as yet, but I think you would get more information from that that would really uh, provide a much more comprehensive assessment uh, of that. Thank you, I'd, I'd appreciate that. Any other questions? Yeah. Councillor Hutchins. Thank you. Um, are we looking at any uh, alter alternate funding, um, naming rights for the pool, that sort of thing, going out to the community to find out if anybody's interested in that? We, we have not done any of that at present. I'm certainly that could be contemplated, but uh, we certainly have looked at sponsorship indoors, like we have the Buds as a sponsor at the 16 Mile Sports Complex. We've never ventured into having naming rights on the exterior of buildings as yet, uh, but that's, we're in the early stages. We have not t contemplated any of that as yet. Okay, so this, is, this has been done before, and this is something that could be looked at, because obviously it, that might make a big difference in many of these things if someone stepped up. Uh, through, like through you, Mr. Mayor, we certainly do uh, do some of that in our facilities on an indoor basis. Uh, is this something that uh, I put a motion to add to the uh, two recommendations that we passed, that they look into this, or do, do I need to do that? Um, you're free to amend the, the motion any way you want. I would oppose that change, and if you do make a motion, I'll speak against it and uh, but uh, the, for me, the bottom line is every term we've had at least one person come forward and suggest <coughs> that there's much money to be gained here, and 
there's actual experience in town that says there isn't as much money there as anyone thinks. And I've always held that the Oakville brand is the superior brand, and I would hate to see um, a commercialized label on our uh, town facilities, and which, which I guess now I'm speaking against a, an amendment that hasn't even been made. But anyway, <laughs> that's okay. That's a that's a that's a pre uh, what do you call a it? A pre-amendment. Yeah, it's a it's a teaser. <laughs> <laughs> but you're still free to make the amendment. <laughs> to make the amendment. I just want to see uh, what the uh, sentiment is amongst the other councillors. The issue, in my opinion, I mean, people have been talking about the costs of developing this. Um, I don't think uh, having a pool called Johnson's Pool or something like that on the, on, on, would, would affect the out external uh, naming of, of the... Of the community center or anything like that, but the perhaps specific rooms or a specific thing might be uh, helpful in, in developing the costs. Well, on an interior basis, we actually already have a sponsorship program. There's, uh, in effect, uh, I guess what you ought perhaps to do is, is um, ask for staff to include estimates of revenue to be gained from sponsorship of interior facilities. That would fit our existing policy. Thank you. That would be wonderful. So I, can I put that into the mo a motion here to ask the staff as well? Councillor Hutchins moves the amendment as I stated. Is there a seconder? For some reason, Councillor Adams seconds it. Uh, all, any speakers to or against the amendment? I'm not going to speak again, having already <laughs> spoken. Let me have that repeated because there is a policy on the books right now. So the request is that the staff include a revenue estimate from interior sponsorships. Uh, as I remember, we've, we engaged, a, we have a staff member assigned to that. Um, we, we have some track records on, on this front and uh, uh, I, I'll support the motion. It's, there's no harm. Okay. Councilor Adams? That's what I was going to say is uh, the councillor is seeking information. I see no harm in, in yeah. getting the information. So uh, all those in favor? Opposed if any? Carried. You've successfully amended the motion. <laughs> is there a mover and seconder for the motion as amended? Councillor Lapworth and Councillor Graham. Any speakers? All those in favor? Opposed if any? And that is carried. Thank you, everybody. That brings us to item number four. I believe, am I right? Yes. <laughs> and this is the master plan for the former Oak Filter Fulger Memorial lands. And we welcome Gabe Charles back to the stand, the podium, and we look forward to your wisdom, Mr. Charles, and your information. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council. So this presentation is an overview of the exercise we went through looking at uh, the site master plan. By way of a little bit of background, which council councils heard a few times already this evening, the South Central Public Land Study back in 2013 had a number of recommendations uh, included in that um, was looking at an overall land use concept for the, the formal hospital site. Since that time, there have been a number of other studies uh, which have been undertaken, including the structural review of the former high school, the study looking at the Chimney Swift habitat as well as we just saw the, the Southeast Community Centre preliminary concept. So for, for Council's recollection, the, this was the staff recommended Council endorsed option and the lands are identified in the Town's official plan as a special policy area. That OP policy recognizes that redevelopment of the site may occur and there's some parameters around how that redevelopment would look. Uh, it is 
uh, identifies it for low density residential uses. So it does have a cap of 29 units per hectare on that. Uh, it does also permit medium density uses, which would be townhouses or apartments, retirement homes, community uses, etc. As noted in that staff report in 2013, it was identified that the number of units were expected to go down depending on the amount of public land which was going to be removed for public roads plus the recommended community center in the park that uh, had come forward at that time. So in the graphic that you'll see, everything north of the Wyndham Manor was identified as being 29 units per hectare. So very loosely that translated to about 156 units and it came in a variety of housing forms and it included a medical facility as well. But once the community center uh, was identified as, uh, as a need in here, those units were pushed to the north end of, of the site. So it was looked at more as a, as a gross calculation and the way the, the official plan is structured is we actually look at density from, from a net perspective. So we went back to revisit how this would, would look uh, based on, on a net density on the overall site. We also took into account what uh, the consulting group did at that time as well as what plan design staff did, which was look at really how would the redevelopment here fit into the neighborhood of that character? How would we look at a mix of housing forms, uh, ensure that we're preserving the, the high school site as, and the parking garage uh, is also static? And uh, we further refined that, that concept a little bit more, including those recent studies, and we uh, devised a number of principles for how we would look at the overall site master plan. So as I noted, the uses and density would be consistent with the official plan. We would be looking at uh, really how we knit new development into the existing fabric that, that is in that neighborhood, ensuring that the community center has a close synergistic relationship with the park and the parking garage itself, that uh, there was the area east of Wyndham Manor would be preserved to ensure that there were still the existing easements and fire routes there. Uh, the heritage aspects of the high school and the Chimney Swift colony would be maintained and conserved, as well as ensuring that there was a green connection uh, through the site. That, that was, was heard loud and clear through the extensive public consultation earlier. So the first option that we'll identify is taking that 2013 concept and evolving that a little bit more, uh, keeping the existing parking garage where it is, obviously the high school where it is, and then seeing what would happen if we were to wrap the community centre around the, uh, the existing high school. In this particular concept, the community center itself, which is identified in that light blue, is a, is a little bit smaller. It's about 35,000 square feet because it accounted for around 10,000 square feet within the high school, still putting us about 45,000 square feet overall for the community center. It does have 68 units overall uh, on, on this particular um, concept. It keeps the density under the 29, it shows up at 23.4 and you have about three quarters of an acre of, of a park space which is identified in the dark green. What I would note is that there is an urban square identified in front of the former high school. That's not part of the overall park calculation, that would be a um, o over and above. The second concept that we work through put the park up at the northwest corner of Reynolds and McDonald. It, it does uh, put the community center distinctly along the Reynolds frontage. It, it identifies a driveway extending in from, from Lawson uh, to the parking garage. And the green connections are actually orange in this, in this uh, um, concept. It just identifies very loosely where those pedestrian connections could be. It, it does have a single detached residential at the north and the east side and it would look at potentially having a townhouse or private uh, laneway condominium style uh, south of the, the existing parking garage. The community centre in here is 45,000 square feet. The last option that we looked at was putting the community centre to the north of the parking garage. There was one additional concept which we looked at, which we had discarded, which was south of the parking garage. There was too much of a disconnect with the park. Uh, the three options that were showing, including this one, had more of a relationship between the community centre itself and the park. With this particular location for the community centre, it is oriented off of Allen Street. There is vehicular access still, though that can be secured from the Reynolds side into the parking garage. Similar to the previous concept, there's a uh, condominium townhouse type development just north of Wyndham Manor and the balance of, of the overall site is primarily single detached uh, lots. There are some townhouses running on to um, another public street, which is accessed from Reynolds and does connect up to McDonald. Uh, the, the park size here is, uh, is one acre. 
So the next steps as, uh, as we carry on is the continued public consultation through this month, the session that we will be having with the public on the 1st of June. We would be reporting to Council at uh, the end of next month. And we are looking to have the statutory meeting and the amending documents back in front of Council by the end of this year. The recommendations are found on the st in the staff report, page 183 of the agenda. And if there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer those now. Thank you, Mr. Charles. Questions? Councillor Grant. J just one quickly, and that's with option two and three. Um, what are we going to do to make sure that the existing school does not become a playground of sorts? It's, with the option one, it seems it's nice. It's kind of built into the community centre. You've got the little atrium. But having it sort of in the middle of what could be a home development in the other two options seems to be a bit of a disconnect leaving it there. Through you, Mr. Mayor, there's a variety of options that can occur with the, the high school and how council wants to uh, potentially dispose of the property, whether it's for a private development for, for seniors oriented housing, whether it's for other uses, that is still possible. Uh, as noted, because the density is at 29 units per hectare, we didn't really look at how that overall site could be developed. It certainly can be, but that would have to be done in, in the context of, of ensuring that um, we're maintaining that, that 29 units per hectare. Um, because we are doing an official plan amendment to bring in the residential uses, um, if, if there's a desire to go beyond that 29 units per hectare, we'd need to think about that a little bit. I, I think my concern is more just protecting the, the heritage property as it is and making sure it doesn't get damaged by having the buildings around it. But we'll get to that bridge, I guess. We... Councillor Hutchins. Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> in option one, uh, I've, I've been sort of rather involved with this for many years. Um, putting the townhouses or some of the townhouses on that particular corner on the north uh, west corner. Um, what would that do down the road when you've got a uh, right opposite it, uh, on the other side of Reynolds Street, uh, that uh, doctor's offices, which is not residential? Would this be a, like a? Uh, would this be setting precedent for someone, a developer, going to buying a, the the buildings across the way and saying to the OMB, okay, there's townhouses right across the street. I'd like to put townhouses here, so you're then getting the density starting to march north towards the train station, because that's obviously within an 800 meter circle of the train station, that's where density is, is usually expected to happen, except for you've got the heritage area in, in many areas there. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, as we we're trying to, to suggest, we we're very cognizant of what that residential fabric is in, in the, the broader area. Uh, on the McDonald and Allen Street um, frontages, as well as along Reynolds. And Reynolds is a little bit different. There's certainly a mix of housing forms that you'll see along there from lower rise apartments. There's a couple of duplexes along there. Uh, so if there was going to be a more dense housing form, whether it's apartments, whether it's townhouses, the Reynolds Street side is the most appropriate of any of the, of the frontages. It is probably the most sympathetic in, in terms of what is established uh, already in the character of that area. And certainly when we're looking at this, our, our effort is to make sure that the development along the east side of Reynolds is compatible with what is ever uh, identified on the west side. So townhouses, I, I don't know, or I, I, don't, I wouldn't suggest would set a precedent in a negative way. It's being complementary to what that existing fabric is is currently. Suggesting it was negative, I mean, I'm sure they're going to be very nice. Uh, that's not the point. The issue is a uh, developer buying up some of the housing, collecting a sufficient land to then go and ask us to change the zoning, and we say no, and they say, okay, I want to go to the OMB because you already allowed townhouses right opposite, uh, you know, on, the, on that corner opposite the street. And by the way, there are houses uh, at that corner too. So mm -hmm. I'm just asking. Through you, Mr. Mayor, any potential development application, whether it's on Reynolds Street or anywhere else in the municipality, we certainly have to ensure that we're reviewing those applications on their own merits and in the context of our official plan policies. Our policies in sections 1118 and 9 do dictate how compatibility is going to work in, in that area. Uh, or any area where those development applications are received. So we would have to look at them on their own merits when they when those applications should they come in. 
you so much in some of the other plants. That's what I'm trying to say, is that you're still getting the same amount of, of building, but it, it's confined to the southern part, which is where you've got already high-rise uh, building and density already there. Density never goes down, it always goes up. So, thank you. Councillor Giddings. Yeah, thank you very much. Further to Councillor Hutchins' comment, uh, would this not be a case where we could do what we did with either uh, both Chisholm and Lindbrook, where working with the residents' associations and the neighbours in the area, we put restrictions on that development and offered it for sale, uh, subject to our zoning, our requirements to prevent that from occurring? Through you, Mr. Mayor, this was our, what I'll say, it was one of our first stabs at how the site could be redeveloped. Through the, the ongoing public consultation, we'd certainly welcome the feedback from, from the public in terms of what they see as, as the benefits, constraints, et cetera, for redeveloping the site. Those obviously would have to be taken into consideration before we come back to council with a recommendation. And whatever is decided uh, by this council, we could put restrictions in place to ensure that that's what we receive, similar to what we did with Chisholm and Limbrook. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Happy to see the low to mid 20s for the uh, units per hectare. I know that was a, a great concern last time we looked at it. And we have three sketches in front of us. Uh, these are going to be going out for public consultation. There will be a meeting June 1st, I understand. It's coming back to Council June 26th. You had mentioned that there would be ongoing consultation in May. Is that public consultation online meeting with residents associations? Could you detail that a little bit? Through you, Mr. Mayor, my understanding was that there was going to be an opportunity for the public to be able to provide submissions through the town, whether that's through email or through the website. Um, that was my understanding. Once this information is public in any event, we know that the public is never shy to share their opinions with us. Couldn't agree more. And uh, so the three before us, we may see a fourth or a fifth, a hybrid of some sort coming back based on community consultation. I would expect that, yes. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Adam. You, as you went through the, uh, the options, you identified some variation in the size of the community centre that's shown in each diagram. Uh, are there any cases where the choices council might make about the the addition of the various uh, optional program enhancements would any of those cause issues with respect to the size of the the building that's shown in these options through you mr. mayor the the community centers identified or shown in the uh, options two two and three were at 45,000 square feet and and those were were done to uh, have an idea as to what would at the time we were assuming could be closer to the maximum size of the um, of the community center uh, as you can see in terms of, of the graphics in, in two and three there's a little bit of space around them that that could be be flexible there's no real magic to how these were laid out they were identified as boxes and how could we get a 45,000 square foot floor plate down um, as Ms. Closey said, um, or I think as, as Ms. Sully may have said, that there's the potential to go up to a second floor. Um, how that floor space gets utilized within that, that footprint remains to be seen. And, it, and is council and the community better off uh, in, in this case building up and um, maintaining additional land for residential development rather than building wider and losing either parkland or building lots through you mr. mayor I, th I think those are some of the challenges and choices that council will have the pleasure of making <laughs> very good thank you commissioner I wonder if you would like to repeat for the public um, your specific advice about um, welcoming additional um, sketches I, as we're calling these when uh, when we were with the Chartwell Maple Grove Residents Association. 
uh, when we go out to the public consultation, uh, we're looking for input in terms of the things that uh, generally people like on the site plan, on the yeah, master plan, uh, what things they'd like to move around or mitigate some of the implications. So our expectation is when we come back with a recommended plan that will be uh, plug and play is probably the best way to describe it. You could take parts of this out, shift them around so that then through those consultation we'd be recreating uh, a plan that reflects the input that we received. Thank you very much for that. Councillor Hutchins. We have all night. Oh, it's okay. I won't be. Just one question. Before I come to you, can I please remember that Sean O'Meara is, Councillor O'Meara is ahead of you. Oh, sorry. Hey, I think I have a very simple question and it's probably a very simple answer, but why a private road? I thought we were trying to move away from private roads. In, sorry, in the options uh, two and three. Through you, Mr. Mayor, it, it is an option that, that we've identified in this type of a configuration where uh, the private lane, in essence, dead ends at the back of another development. Condominiumizing that provides the, the most security uh, from the town's perspective as well as from the owner's perspective. Okay, I appreciate that. I, I just know at some point along the road, the Ward 3 councillors are going to start getting questions and asking about why they don't get the same services as everybody else in Oakville. So maybe just trying to ward you off some headaches, but thank you. Oh, the burn, the burn. Councillor Hutchins, what are, you, what are you meaning to do? Rise to the burn here? <laughs> oh, good. You have the floor then. I was merely going to thank him, actually. <laughs> Simply thank him. Um, uh, Commissioner Closey, if I could ask you, um, when you go out to the public and with all these things to move around and, and get all these sketches, is it possible also to illustrate somehow the density already existing around this place so that people understand where the density is currently located and so they, they get a contextual uh, idea of what it's going to look like? Certainly, actually a context map that shows the density in the area would be a great addition to the consultation. Yeah. So we will do that. So yep. Good suggestion, thank you. Alrighty then. Um, I wonder if there is a mover and seconder for the recommendations here. Councillor Giddings and Councillor Hutchins. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? There are no opposed. I declare the recommendation carried and passed. And uh, all we really did was receive a report for information and ask the staff to consult with the public just to make that clear. Uh, so it was an easy uh, uh, decision to make, I think. Let's, let's move to a tougher one. Is there a mover and seconder for the confirmatory bylaw? Councillor Knoll and Councillor Lapworth. Turns out that was easy too. All those in favor? And that carries unanimously as well. That completes the agenda. It's been great working with you. Thank you for your time and attention, and that ends our meeting. Good night. <laughs>